everybody. Yes, my voice is still shot, but I am here and we are back. Happy holidays to you all who still celebrate them. Well, I'm just a simple man. And my name is Noah Foster. And welcome once again to another edition of 205 Live Matters Double Feature. And this is also the last edition for 2019. In this edition, we're going to briefly discuss the best of series, part one, part two. We're going to give you our thoughts on what we thought was the best, what they picked. And if we could add one thing, what we would add. And then we're going to finally finish off both our lists and go in detail on our top two matches on our list. Because we want to get through this as quick as possible. Because why we made this time to do this during the post-holidays, we both got work and stuff to do tomorrow on the last day of 2019. And you know who my partner is during this whole year. We have really much ran this series together. He is a family man. He is one of my best friends. He is a member of Team NDQ and the NX team. As far as I'm concerned, he is no DQ. It's my best friend here, the holiday, Mr. Christopher Mace. Chris, how are you? How was your holiday? Oh, holiday's great. Kids came into town after day after Christmas, so it's been a fun adventure with them being here. So it's been a great holiday. It's best, one of the best Christmas I've had in a while, so that's always a good thing. <laughs> Hey, there you go. And like I said, Christmas for me is simple. It definitely was more rewarding than I expected, and I always appreciate time with my family. But in the end, it's all about just giving spirituality and just having a positive environment around you and a jolly good time to close out the year. And that, of course, is what 205 Live did this time with these last two weeks. It was not new. It was a recap. As we looked at the best of 2019, Part 1 and Part 2 gave us basically three incidences across the 205 Live brand, the inclusion of NXT, and even pay-per-view matches that were the best of 205 Live, according to the WWE. So to just briefly sum up, the best they chose was the Royal Rumble Fatal 4-Way, the Elimination Chamber match between Buddy Murphy and Akira Tozawa, the 4-Way was between Murphy, Kalisto, Akira Tozawa, and Hideo Tommy, the WrestleMania match, of course, between Tony Nese and Buddy Murphy, and they did pick one match from 205 Live as well, and I'm pretty sure both of us already mentioned it on our list, it was Akira Tozawa versus Mike Kanellis, no DQ, for yep. May 7, 2019. Part two, however, they really picked it up here. I'm surprised it didn't end with this, but I see how they kind of also went in chronological order. They literally start off with my favorite match, I think, of 205 Live, maybe. Uh, Jack Gallagher versus Chad Gable, July 16th, which was Jack versus Gable 2. They also gave us... Drake Maverick versus Mike Kanellis was more about the story and the feud versus the match, in my opinion. And then, of course, they summed up in the end with, uh, oh, wait, I forgot. They also did Real Mendoza versus Leo Rush, who really brought the best out of each other in this new incarnation, per se, of the 2 of Life roster. And they finished up, of course, with the last big Cruiserweight Championship match of the year between a battle of rivals with a hot crowd behind it and a hell of an opener, and that's how you treat a Cruiserweight title match. And finally... He got what he wanted. Leo Rush versus Angel Garza for the Cruiserweight Championship. So, in my opinion, I thought they had some very strong picks here. And I like the fact they did include a pay-per-view. Because as you know, folks, me and Chris, we have not talked about really pay-per-views at all. Besides, this is what happened at the pay-per-view. But they actually talk about how some of the pay-per-view matches were the best. So, Chris, give me your brief thoughts on both those best of episodes of 205 Live. What was your thoughts on their picks? Uh, I thought their picks were good. Um, I was kind of surprised they didn't add the triple threat match with uh, with uh, Gulak defending against Roberto and uh, oh my god, I'm gonna go brain dead and uh, oh my god, I'm really going brain dead here. <laughs> it's to me. Sorry, y'all. It's been a long week, but let's say Dorado. <laughs> uh, oh, then, yeah, Dorado. They also, they forgot a few matches too. They all blend in together sometimes, but they forgot a few matches too. We had. The ones with Nice when he Nice when he was spinning his title and he got he had a few matches they could have brought up they could have brought up the Captain Hook match they had with the with pretty much the whole elimination match five and five elimination style match they could have brought that match up in the series yeah. they had a few matches that were really well done that they could have brought up but they didn't so but for what they picked I like they think they did a really good job with they picked they included a lot of the matches that happened at the pay-per-views and i thought it was interesting how they closed part two with the just recent time of change with angel Garza and leo rush 
Yeah, I completely agree. And honestly, I would have added stopping grounds as well because that triple threat was amazing where Drew Gulak became champion against Tony Nese and Akira Tozawa. I thought that was probably the best match of stopping grounds for a paper that replaced Great Balls of Fire. Now, will that paper come back in 2020? I don't know. And then you brought up a point about the, the special first that they did with 205 Live with their own version of Survivor Series and the Captain's Choice match. I thought Kushida had a very strong debut and it could have led us up in bigger. I'm surprised they haven't done Kushida versus Kira Tozawa yet. Well, now they can't because Kira Tozawa is on Monday Night Raw. And then when I think about other 205 Live matches, yeah, they could have definitely used like Buddy Murphy versus Tony Nese, in my opinion, post WrestleMania, because in my opinion, that match was better than the one at WrestleMania for a number of yes. reasons. But those are just a few of my uh, tidbit thoughts and matches that I would add. But with that, Really, uh, there's nothing else to talk about as far as the TV goes. So here we go, finishing our list, folks. We're just going to give it to you straight. We have our top six matches on our remaining list of top 25 matches we believe you should watch from the 205 Live brand. And we're just going to go through six, five, four, and three like that and then talk to you about our top two because I'm pretty darn sure he and I have to freaking collide with the same match either as one of these numbers or maybe the impossible will happen. It will be the same number for us both. So here we go. So, number six for me, I was really thinking about this a lot because, you know, I look at 205 Live, I was looking at chronologic at first in the lower part of my list, but then I really picked up and looked at it from more of a story-based telling, in action, crowd interest, commentary build towards standpoint. And that's why my number six, I had a couple of choices, but honestly, I feel like it had to be mentioned because it really was the beginning. My number six is actually episode one, Rich Swan versus the Brian Kendrick for the Cruiserweight Championship. The inaugural episode of 205 Live that occurred back in November of 2016. And it was the Brian Kendrick who came in after taking the title from TJ Perkins on a pay-per-view I can't remember the name of. And then Rich Swan, who was really giving us a very touching, powerful story, how his family motivated him to do this. His mom was always behind him. And in the end, these two had a cracking main event match. And Marlon Nell was also on commentary during that time. But yeah, major moment. And Rich Swan won, bringing 205 Live in underneath his reign. So I put Rich Swan versus V. Brian Kendrick, November 29, 2016, as my number six. Chris, what about you? Mine is Austin Aries versus TJP, May 16, 2017, because they were building up Austin Aries. He, like I said, he had just left Impact, joined WWE, went to the NXT for a little bit, had that injury, so he was doing commentary, but started out 205 Live. He was building up momentum, setting up for him with him and uh, Neville at the time for the Cruiserweight title, and we all know how that debacle played out after everything was said and done, but... They were building him up in Austin Aries. I was excited about this match because I was excited about the possibility of what him and TJP could do. They had on a pretty damn good match. Mm -hmm. And it's got to be up there as number six. What a waste they could have used with Austin Aries in that 205 Live division. He is missing that 205 Live division. That's that's why he's my number six on this countdown. <laughs> And it's a good choice. And we all saw what happened to Austin Aries when he faced Neville at WrestleMania. And then they had the cracking submissions match that just got filled away. Sign next, we you know Austin Aries. <laughs> He was gone. Neville shortly fought after because of the Dark Ages that came to 205 Live. But I digress. All right. Why don't you kick off this one? What's your number five? We're in our top Rick five. Swan and Ced Rick Swan and Cedric Alexander versus TJP and Tony Nice. Nice. Tag team dynamic. I picked, I picked this match pretty much because I was thinking at this time Rick Swan and Cedric Alexander could form this interesting tag team. And I figured the scenario would be they could be able to challenge for either the Raw or SmackDown tag titles, especially during this time when they were still based under the Raw brand. They could have had a chance to challenge for the tag titles and possibly win the tag titles because yeah. them two together worked well together. And they had, a, even though they didn't tag that much, they had a well oiled machine working together in this match. So that's why it's my number five. All right, pretty simple. And my top five, I look at. Basically, a passing of the torch for 205 Live, I think, in this one, and it occurred during the Cruiserweight Championship Tournament this year. My number five is the first time someone kicked out a Cedric Alexander's lumbar check. It's Cedric Alexander versus Tony Nese in pretty much the finals of the Cruiserweight Championship Tournament this year, March 19, 2019. A very cracking match for Cedric Alexander was once again trying to prove why he is the heart and soul of 205 Live, why he should be leading the brand. He wanted to get his redemption against Buddy Murphy. Tony Nese, though he wasn't sure where he was going, but you saw how passionate he wanted to be about this. He wanted to get this moment because obviously WrestleMania was in his hometown. 
our home turf, New York, and somehow, some way, through endurance, heart, or just wrestling instinct and all, and you thought I was over on the Lombard check, and there was the biggest pop of the night, and Hajime gets like, ho, ho, ho. Tony Knees kicks out of Sarah Center's Lombard check, finally sets him up for Randy's, hits them lighting knees, and finally gets that three count and is ecstatic, and we saw what it led to. So my number five was Tony Knees for Sid Alexander, who's a championship tournament. All right. Number four. I'm still in the Cruiserweight Championship Tournament, but I rewind and went further back. It was a man who's no longer a part of it and one guy who only was on the show once. But you talk about a match of strong style. My number four is Roderick Strong versus Dale Atami, February 6, 2018. These two kicked and beat the living daylights out of each other in a match to remember that symbolizes Japan's strong style because it was kicks and stretch galore and somehow, some way, this is his debut and only match, but he won. And they never capitalized off of that as far as his further working with the Cruiserweight division or 205 Live. But that was an amazing match and one of Dale and Tommy's early greats underneath that division before he was all about respect me and stuff like that. My number four was Roderick Strong versus Dale and Tommy. From February 6, 2018. What about you? You stole my number four. Are you serious? Yeah, you stole my number four. Same match. <laughs> that exact same reason. One of the other Roderick Strong. But had, uh, like I said, it was an awesome match. Those two were beating the crap out of each other. And it was a very telly story. It was a really awesome match. And like I said, I'm glad Hideo Tommy, a.k.a. Kenta, is back in New Japan doing what he's doing there. And he loved doing there. But I thought this was something special for Dale Tommy. I thought this could have been something different for Roderick Strong, do. But, hey, I'm not mad at the path they got with Roderick Strong right now, ending 2019 North American champion. Hard to undisputed there. I ain't mad at all about what they've done with the man. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we stole my we, number four. We're going to we play that. We literally next. did it. We freaking mashed. <laughs> Finally, right. it only took us to get to number four match. To yeah, it. tell me about it, right? All right, let's have a little bit of a fun side, simple stance here. We looked back at 2019. We're talking about the best match 205 Live. But before we get into our top three, I want to first ask you, in your opinion, outside the 205 Live TV show and NXT incursion, I want you to look at pay-per-views and specials. What was the best 205 Live Cruiserweight match you saw from a WWE pay-per-view this year? What was your number one? Oh, God. Stop. We're going to do – I'm going to make sure I get the right – I'm going to do the right triple threat now this time. I love Roberto Carrillo versus Drew Gulak versus Loretta Dorado in that match, that triple threat match. I was about to butcher it again, too. They had a lot of triple threat <laughs> It's hard to – Sometimes, folks, it's hard to remember some of these triple threat matches, but that was one that was my favorite on the pay-per-views. I loved that matchup, how well it played out. It made Dorado look like he was he could actually win the title, how the finish came out when Humberto hit his – like he was about to hit his finish, and then Drew Gulak came out of nowhere and make sure he retained the title. I loved yeah, that match. Trip, he was the favorite. Wall. Yeah, and listen, Dorado, he was trying to prove a point. It seemed like he was showing heelist tactics. He was trying – because, you know, he's old-school Lucha Libre versus Humberto Carrillo, who was new-school Lucha Libre. And really, that was the focal point of their rivalry in this match, whether it was friendly or not. It was for the title. These two brought against each other. Drew Gulak, he remained showing why he was the law. Great pick. Oh, man. All right. Well, I put myself in the spot here. I figured about that they did pick the Royal Rumble. I figured about that triple threat. You know I talked to you about stopping grounds. They didn't do like a major classic at Survivor Series like they did last year with Mustafa Ali and Buddy Murphy, unfortunately. And mm. honestly, I got to say, I think, honestly, I have to go with 205 Live on this one. I love the Royal Rumble Fatal 4-Way. You think about the crazy antics brought on in that match between the unstoppable juggernaut Buddy Murphy. And then you get this impromptu tag teaming between, like, Hideo Itami, Akira Tozawa, Kalisto. There was the suicide dive for a Kimrana spot that drove Buddy Murphy to the barricade thanks to Akira Tozawa, diving in between Hideo Itami's legs, causing Kalisto to run up Buddy Murphy. And then you got the elevated springboard from Akira Tozawa to Kalisto that threw Kalisto into the stratosphere, and he fell on top of Buddy Murphy. And then Hideo Itami's just all in the ring. We eventually get just a competitive striking exchange between Buddy Murphy and Hideo Itami, and Hideo dropped that boy. Eventually, though, Buddy Murphy, he gets control over all the men. He does Kenny Omega type spot, rise of Terminator, flies over the top rope seamlessly, takes all the men out. But as he goes in the ring, what happens? Boom! Kalisto, he spikes him. You talk about Buddy Murphy knows how to sell a spike 
DDT, my God. And then kick, impromptu kick, impromptu kick. Buddy Murphy eats three kicks, and then we get a super kick and another kick. All four men are down. And despite all this madness going on, other officials galore, somehow, someway, Buddy Murphy retained in the end. Holy hell, what a match. So that would be my pick. All right, let's go ahead and get back into our uh, top three. Uh, I believe you, I started uh, number four, but... I, I still can't believe how you and I, and it only took like yeah, 22 matches we actually tied. <laughs> yeah, finally. But well, so what happens here with these top three? What is your number three? Number three is the captain's challenge, ten man elimination match, the only match they ever completed a whole show on two or five live ever in its history, and it happened this year. The match was incredible. The ten men that were in there was an incredible match. It was incredible storytelling. And at the very end, when you had Humberto and Lorcan surviving and winning the match, it was setting up for the future with them having to face each other for the right to challenge for the Cruiserweight Championship with Drew Gulak held at the time. It was a really damn good match. And this is also the sign that Tony Nese eventually starting to turn heel again and go back more with Drew Gulak. But we all know how that played out. Gulak went back to, went to SmackDown, that draft. They ain't doing nothing with him there. And then Tony Nese is, doing something with the – we don't even want to know, talk about what he's doing right now, but hopefully he gets back on track in 2020. But, like I said, this was that was my number three. I love that match. That was my number three match. All right. Excellent choice there. Yeah, and I have to admit, it also brought in some of the newer faces of 205 Live that really made ways for themselves, including Isaiah Swerve Scott, Humberto Carrillo, and by the way, Humberto Carrillo, Oli Lorcan. They were basically sole survivors in what really was a traditional type Survivor Series elimination match. And in the end, it also qualified Oli Lorcan to get a Cruiserweight Championship opportunity again against Drew Gulak. And then we find Tony Nees basically lost in the shuffle. Was he going heel? Not quite, because as the heel team led by Gulag gained advantage, he didn't necessarily always capitalize on that or took part in it. And of course, Mike Knells, he gets eliminated early. For that poor guy, jeez. And so much more. All right, great choice. Uh, my number three actually was, again, talking about the unstoppable himself. And I think it was like one of his last matches, if I remember correctly. But my number three is actually Buddy Murphy versus Cedric Alexander from May 29th, 2018. And I take that back. It wasn't one of his last. It was actually a Cruiserweight title match because Buddy mm -hmm. Murphy being this unstoppable juggernaut and Sid Alexander now owning 205 Live as champion, he was on the rise and he took on all comers. He took on the likes of Hideo Tommy, who I thought was going to incapacitate the freaking guy. And then you have this unstoppable juggernaut who's finally got past Mustafa Ali for a period in Buddy Murphy. And these two put on an incredible clinic. In the end, Buddy Murphy, he could not set up Murphy's Law, and somehow, some way, he gets flipped inside out on a freaking neuralizer, not once, but twice, and set Alexander catches him with his ace in the hole, the lumbar check. Now, obviously, mm -hmm. you know what this set up for later in a great 10-minute match that was probably my favorite match from that special, but I digress. But, yeah, my number three is Buddy Murphy, set up Alexander, Cruiserweight Championship match, May 29, 2000. Well, here we go, our top two. And my number two, you can tell how much I respected how much this Cruiserweight put into the division. Or should I say both of them? My number two is Mustafa Ali versus Buddy Murphy. No DQ. July 3rd, <laughs> July 3rd, 2018. You talk about a match that set up what Mustafa Ali was truly capable of and the risk that Buddy Murphy and him would take with that freaking springboard standing still step spot Spanish fly. And then they go over the announcement. These two are just trying to destroy each other. At one point, Mustafa Ali is incapacitated. Buddy Murphy tells him to go, shh. And then he keeps kicking him with his own form of B triggers. But somehow, some way, Mustafa Ali beat the unstoppable and survived this onslaught. And I couldn't freaking believe it. Just go back and watch this match, folks. July 3rd, 2018. And I well, I guess it wasn't this year, so I gotta get on that. Fight Murphy versus Mustafa Ali. No DQ. What is your number two? And the crazy thing is, just a note on that match, is that WWE ranks that as the number one match ever in 205 Love. Yeah, and the views don't lie either. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, folks, cat's got to go out. So, all right, number two match. 
number two match of mine would be Cedric Alexander versus Ram Metalik versus TJP versus Leo Rush versus Tony Nice from October 17, 2018. Nice. The you had this match on your list earlier in your list, like I had the match you mentioned earlier on the list. But like I said, this was an incredible match. Like I say, Leo Rush was on a roll. If I remember correctly, he hadn't lost yet this time. This is one of his not. first losses to actually get. And then, like I said, if you look at all these men now and where they're at now, like I said, TJP's in New Japan. Cedric Alexander's on Raw. Grand Metal League's still there. No, Grand Metal League's on SmackDown. Rephrase that. Leo Rush <laughs> is doing his thing with NXT and 205 Live. And Tony Lee's still on 205 Live and going to do stuff with NXT. He's also been on Raw, too. So, like I said, these five men, this was an incredible match. It was an incredible showcase of talent and definitely a must-watch. If you ever want to watch any high-flying cruise, if you ever want to watch how a five-way match works correctly, watch this match. This will tell you how a five-way match works. If there's one thing that 205 Live has a great strength in, it's multi-man matches because it takes the cruiserweight division to a whole nother level considering who could outperform the other, who could take the advantage, how will the enemy be set up, and who will win the match? I think, honestly, when you have a multi-man match, that's when 205 Lives are at strongest more often than not. But before we get into my number one that kind of defeats that fact, I got one more fun little simple stance. In your opinion, my friend, who was the overall best cruiserweight performer of 2019? All year? All year. In your opinion, that's tough because I would want to say you would want I would want to say Tony Nice all around the performance he gave at the beginning of the year, going into WrestleMania and everything. But then he he went on a downward spiral shortly after losing the Cruiserweight title, and then Gulak was on a phenomenal roll, but then he wasn't there the whole year, so he moved to SmackDown. And then I don't want to say Leo Rush because Leo Rush was there. Just went back to a five law division, become the cruiserweight champion, had a run and lost it toward the end, yeah. the end of the year. <sighs> Lord, uh, I'm gonna go with if I want to look at somebody, see, that's tough because half the people I would think of to even think about, they're already on a different brand, like Humberto. I would say Humberto, but he's on Raw now, Gulak, he's right. on Smack, one of those, right? But here's the I'll thing. See, we- we look at the cruiserweight division, they might not be on 205 Live, but they're still cruiserweights and they help build that division. And you wonder how they would carry what they did in 205 Live into the main roster. To be fair, some of your picks, they have been making waves and somewhat still are on the main roster. So if you are picking somebody who's no longer on 205 Live but originally on 205 Live, I will accept that. I'm going to go Kira Tozawa for his performance all around year. He kept, he's been consistent all year with his matches, whether he's won or lost. He's been that one consistent in 205 Live. He was having consistent matches, phenomenal matches, no disqualification matches, any kind of matchup you want to put him in, he's going to perform at a high level. So I'm going to say Kira Dezawa had the, uh, to me, in the 2019, even though he didn't win the title, he had the most consistent matches and some of the most high praise matches I was talking about on the show, except for one individual we'll talk about here in a minute. (laughs) (laughs) Very. Yes, the stamina monster himself, who also has been involved in NXT and has challenged even Leo Rush for the Cruiserweight Championship and was even involved at Survivor Series, representing Raw and Cruiserweight Wrestling, also for the Cruiserweight Championship. Very good pick. But I'm actually going to go off one person you did say because he came in with one hell of a debut. He rolled with it. People saw his potential. It led to feuds. It led to friendly competition. He's new school. He's been challenged for his style. He may no longer be on the brand, but he's still making strides using his own style. And he's even been endorsed by a cruiserweight legend you and I both respect. Mine is, of course, Humberto Carrillo. Nobody yep. can argue with the stratosphere of shooting that he got for 205 Live, for the incredible matches he had, coming out of the gate versus the cruiserweight champion, Buddy Murphy, taking him to the limit with Buddy Murphy even afterwards. He looked back and gave him the nod. And then you go further down the line, he finally gets an opportunity after the cruiserweight tower after going past Jack Gallagher, after going past Drew Gulak, after even fighting the Lucha House Party, sometimes under weird circumstances, and so much more. Then he moves out to Monday Night Raw, and even each week, it seems, he and Andrade Cien Amas are stealing the show. Now, I truly don't know what's next for Roberto Carrillo at this point, because Vince McMahon's a freaking idiot. Sorry, not sorry. It's a fact. If you don't think so, then obviously you are under Vince McMahon's bed, but man, that, that's your priority. But anyway, yeah, mine has got to be 
And he also got involved, of course, in NXT. And who could forget his match with his cousin, Angel Garza? That mm -hmm. was a fun feud, too, in itself. So, yes, my cruiserweight of the year is Humberto Carrillo. All right, so here we are, ladies and gentlemen, and my friend. We finally made it to the end of 2019. We talked about 205 Live. We even talked about pay-per-views. We talked about how it's grown, evolved, changed, who's moved on to a different roster, because NXT is the main roster. But here is our overall favorite match from the 205 Live brand, in our honest opinion, on our list. And I think I will let you Go first. With your old school mentality, looking at the storytelling, looking at how everybody has developed, thinking about who may be connected with something you've seen in your past with WCW or something else, etc. Chris, what is your number one overall recommended match from 205 Live? The gentleman Jack Gallagher versus Chad Gable, too, is the only, one of the only two matches I gave a five-star rating on. In 205 Live, I even said it high enough. This didn't get ranked a five-star match by Dave Meltzer or anybody else. They absolutely lost their freaking minds. Or if this wasn't nominated for match of the year candidate, they lost their freaking minds. This match was insane. This was an incredible match. And if you go back to the backstory, they both had wrestled each other before. This was Chad Gable's debut when he fought the gentleman Jack Gallagher. And, yes, Chad Gable did one by a count out. But with everybody knows the circumstances, they've heard the rumors and circumstances that it was a botch. It wasn't. He wasn't. He was supposed to get out, but you know accidents happen. He slipped, wasn't able to make it. You know it's recording, so you see he's not back in ten. It was count out victory. But what that did, because we might have had that one match and been done. But what it did was it built up another story that the gentleman said, "You didn't beat me. I needed this match. I gotta have this match. I gotta see if I can do it." And it built up such an incredible match. It is by far the best in 2019 for 205 Live at number one. Um, and it's definitely all around. It's definitely on mine. It's my number one for all the matches so far. I said you can take away disqualification match, take away all the especially matches they've had, everything like that. If you look for a pure technical wrestling standpoint, storytelling, old school mentality, you look at that, you can watch Chad Gable versus the gentleman Jack Gallon heard number two, and that match will steal the show, and you can put that on any show, and it will steal the show anytime. And that is why you and I, my friend, are not only friends in professional wrestling, but friends in cruiserweight wrestling, because that yeah. was my number one, straight from July 16, 2019, and showcased as part of the opener of part two of the best of 205 Live. You pretty much summed it up and hit the nail on the head right there. Talking about the history, the only other cruiserweight match to an extent that really Chad Gable was involved in before he got turned in at 30G. F and kill me. But I digress. But everything about this match was truly phenomenal. At first, the crowd wasn't in because the crowd's like burned out. You saw some empty seats. Crowd's like, meh. Some are indifferent. Both men, they were jogging for positions, though. They were trying to figure out each other. And then, of course, at one point, Jack Gallagher still gets his strength, suspended vertical suplex for good 10 seconds, got a good pop from the crowd, and then he dropped him. And then, of course, we had a commentary talking about how dynamic and amazing these two could put on an incredible match. As the match progressed, the crowd got more in it. And they did recall history, as you said, because after a suicide dive spot that kind of got, you know, caught, mm -hmm. per se... What does Jack? What does Chad Gable do? He face plants freaking Jack Gallagher on the floor, and he's like, "No, we're not doing that. No, this is not going to be count. I'm, I'm going to beat him in the ring." Following this, we get an interesting powerbomb combination into a fall, into an ankle lock, immediately capitalized by Chad Gable. If he should not have wrestled Kurt Angle, I, I don't know who should have as a passing mm -hmm. of the torch, but I digress. Following the angle off spot, though, Jack Gallagher, he counters in the most impromptu way, really unleashing aggression at this point. It's screw tacticality. I need to kick this guy's ass because he's kicking my ass at my own game. Now I'm going to dish from technician to brawler, and he's just beating the dang guy down with fist, fist galore. Following this, both men, they jogged for position for who could capitalize on the other, and then the crowd got into it. We got rolling cabinet hit combination, the gentleman's head putt. He literally falls into the cover for the nearest near fall of the match up to this point. But then following this, Gable and him, they're slowly getting up. They're both, like, jockeying for each other until Gable paintbrushes Jack Gallagher. And boy, did that wake him up. And then we get a ruthless exchange between both until Gallagher gets Gable into the corner and just raining fists down on him, clubbing him, clubbing him, clubbing him, clubbing him. I'm surprised the ref didn't count during this to try and gain the advantage. Following this, he goes for his drop kick. However, 
Chad Gable pulls off something you've never seen before. He counters the drop kick by catching him over his shoulder, and then you're wondering, okay, what's he going to do? Is he going to set up like some sort of a uh, razor's edge here? I don't know what you call this, but basically following this, he just turns the man inside out and face plants him with a power slam for another near fall in this match. The crowd starts getting into it. We hear, this is awesome. He goes then for a perfect moonsault. He and Cass Ray have two of the best moonsaults in the business, in my opinion. But then he eats two feet to the chin, right underneath the jaw, as Nigel McGuinness would call it. And Chad, excuse me, Jack Gallagher, he finally capitalizes as game on! Boom! He hits the gentleman's drop kick. He's got him. One, two, foot on the rope. You've got to be kidding me. This match is not over. And then following this, Jack Gallagher, he can't believe it. They're up in the corner because he's got to pull out something. He's got to go high risk. He's got to do something to put the man away. So Jack Gallagher, Chad Gable, they're jogging for position on the corner. He's just raining down more fists on him. Both men exchanging. Crowd saying, this is awesome up to this point. And as he goes for a superplex, Jack Gallagher, Chad Gable counters it into a cross body, changes the momentum of his body and flattening the gentleman. Following that, we finally get towards the end where both men are doing snap arounds, but Chad Gable, he gets Jack Gallagher in the corner, rolled through, yeah, suplex into the bridge, one, two, three. Standing ovation from everybody in the audience including commentary, all three men themselves. Now we're getting saying, it's days like this that I do this job for free. I would love to freaking do that job. If nothing else, just watch from ringside. My yep. God, what an incredible match. And even after that, there was a show of respect. It was breathtaking competition. And then Chad Gable, he picks up Jack Gallagher. They both look at each other. Chad just nods, fist bumps, leaves the ring to the gel and Jack Gallagher, the OG of 205 Live. And as Jack just looks on maybe one about his future the crowd keeps giving him a standing ovation and that match in general that in my opinion is not only the number one match on my list but probably my favorite match of 205 live since it existed all right well with that that finally we did it my friend concludes our list so let's just close the show with this in your opinion, what do you hope to see in 2020 from the Cruiserweight division? And as of right now, who do you see being the next big breakout star? Oh, that's going to be one of those hard ones there for 2020. Um, that's going to be a hard one. I think, I think you're going to have Angel Garza is going to have a good run with the Cruiserweight Championship. Uh, I think Leo Rush is going to still be there, but he's not going to be that breakout star. But I see Isaiah Swerve Scott being the one that comes in there. And uh, I'm going to go brain dead. I'm going to go brain on his name. You're going to tell me he's former ZI on. You're going to have to give me his name. I've got to go brain dead. Walking Thank wild. you. I, I think <laughs> he's going to be also one of those breakout stars as well coming into 2020. I think both those men are going to end up with the Cruiserweight Championship at some really? point in 2020. That's my predictions on that. All right, I like that. Okay, so of course I posed this question also to our hashtag two of five mass Facebook group and one of our founding one of our fellow members here, Owen Finch. Go follow his channel, folks. Wrestling Forgings. He does great jobs. He endures the good and the bad of all wrestling with his wrestling rundowns. You want a good listen from work? Go listen to his stuff. He said that, in his opinion, the best match he saw from two of five this year was Bimer versus Tony Nese, two of five after Mania. The cruiser that impressed him the most this year was Arya Davari, and he hopes that they have a complete revamp and things really turn out of the part of NXT. He wants cruiserweight tag team championships. Damn it. His exact words. <laughs> well, considering we have the Dusty Tag Team Classic coming up in 2020 and the cruiserweights are now NXT, it would not surprise me one bit to see a couple of cruiserweight-based teams in that, and I think that would be phenomenal. But as far as to answer my own simple stance, I would have to say this. With Angel Garza leading, with who we've seen really come out to be a top-tier performer, even beyond enhancement, and I include Raul Mendoza in that conversation, and who I think could still be involved in the Cruiserweight division and make some major strides, such as Kushida, I got to go with you on this one for one person, and that is definitely Isaiah Swerve Scott. Even mm -hmm. if the change be going at all, there is no doubt in my mind since this guy came in, Shane Strickland, 
he has made huge strides across NXT. Not only challenging Cruiserweights, but basically everybody. His match against Dijakovic was simply phenomenal. He's beaten the likes of Bronson Reed. He did fall short to the Cruiserweight Champion, but you could use that in storyline to set up a Cruiserweight Championship match. And this man right here, he's going to prove to you why he faints at Swerve's house. Now, in my opinion, it's too soon to talk about the former GJC, Joaquin Wilder, because we've only seen one match from him against a jobber. So with that being said, I'm going to hold my thoughts off on that. And we still need to see more on Danny Birch. But another person I could truly see taking 205 Live into the stratosphere, it's got to be Kushida. If he gets past this feud with Cameron Grimes and they do, you know, trick you or change up the whole weight thing with 205 Live, I could definitely see Kushida, since he was a former IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion, one of the longest, most frequent reigning ones, I might add, that gave classic after classic after classic. I could definitely see Kushida leading the Cruiserweight division. So those are my brief thoughts when it comes to what I hope to see and what I think will happen come 205 Live's 2020 and the Cruiserweight division as a whole. (sighs) <sighs> All right, Chris, before we wrap this up, is there anything else in your mind that you would like to say? You anything else you want to commemorate about this year or anything you want to discuss in Simple Stances? I, I just had the feeling that I hope they come up to this year. I know Ray Mysterio and Jushin Thunder Liger. I'm hoping to God that they do the right thing, and hopefully after Wrestle Kingdom that's coming up here in the beginning of January comes up, once Houston Thunder Liger retires, I hope they actually try to bring him in the WD, even if it's a one-off match versus Rey Mysterio. That would be a, that would be an incredible match, just because you could also put Houston Thunder Liger in the WWE Hall of Fame at that time as well, honoring that man's career. He's been wrestled all over the world, and I think it would be an ultimate way to pay respect. We've only got the one match between the two, Starcade 96. It'd be time. I want to see it one more time before both men get ready to retire. And like I said, I do hope that Rey Mysterio does go to a five live so that it all come full circle and keep proposing this and hope it happens and let them have that final match where now whoever the champion is, it could be Angel Garza. That would actually be better than what I recommended earlier this year with Tony Nese. I would say definitely have Angel Garza, have the new guard versus the old guard and let it be for a title. I think that actually would work a a lot more sense with Angel Garza being the champion right now to do that. Yeah, and considering that Humberto Carrillo has already been endorsed by Rey Mysterio, and we haven't really heard much about Andrew Garza being endorsed by Rey Mysterio, Andrew Garza being the egotistical man that we know his character is, he can use that as fuel towards building a match against this legend, saying, I can surpass you! I am the better luchador! I am the better wrestler! You need to retire, old man! But absolutely, I would love to see as a send-off match Ray Mysterio is choosing for the Liger for both men at WrestleMania and choosing for the Liger going into the WWE Hall of Fame for all his contributions to professional wrestling as a whole. That is an incredible final thought to figure about as we head into 2020. But with that, ladies and gentlemen, I am happy to say that we, as of 2019, to if that matters, are officially done. So thank you so much to everybody who has joined us this year on this journey. We hope that you had an incredible time with us. We hope you continue to follow us into the next decade and 2020. Before we call it a night, Chris, we got one more day of this year, but we're done talking wrestling until 2020, and I'll talk about that in a moment. But is there anything else you want to say and anything you want to plug? Uh, thank you for everybody who's sat here and took time of their day to watch 205 Live Matters. Noah started this, his, his channel Talking about this show, it's been great and honor being his co-host, being his, like I said, he's like my brother to me. It's been a fun ride this year talking to him about wrestling, especially cruiserweight wrestling. And like I said, it's been fun. He's got this show. I got my channel, The Holiday Christopher Mace. Had 118 people. Looks like that's how I'm going to close out for the end of the year. That's an amazing feeling since September. And you can check out my NWA Power Reviews. Cause like I said, I'm that old school kind of guy, I like the old school style of wrestling. So definitely I do the NWA Power Reviews with Mark Reviews. So it's always a lot of fun. And you can also check out me and Noah did uh, NWA Into the Fire review as well, which has gotten over 200 views, which is very incredible for a review wow. show on my channel at least. So that's very incredible. And if y'all want to follow me, like I said, you can follow me on Christopher Mace on Facebook, Christopher Mace on Twitter and Instagram. And and like I said, support everybody from the NX team. Simple and easy. If you're not sure all the channels, I said you always go to my wrestling content list, and all the newest episodes are on my wrestling content list. You can support everybody. And from the bottom of my heart for 2019, thank you to everybody from the NX team. It's been an incredible year with everybody 
talking with everybody, and I can't wait till 2020 to do this all over again. Absolutely, my friend and gentlemen. Thank you so much. And ladies and gentlemen, if you want to know more about me, know this, especially if this is the first time you've heard this. Otherwise, this is now at least the 52nd time you've heard it. Mm -hmm. I'm just a simple man. And if you haven't figured it out by now, where's your brain? I'm just messing with you. But I am truthfully and always will be in the worst and best of times a lifelong fan of wrestling so if you want to follow me and talk anything wrestling the five brands of wwe nwa aew ring of honor impact wrestling and of course my number one new japan pro wrestling and independent wrestling sport pro wrestling folks because that's the hard and where it all starts look me up on twitter notiq.com forward slash no taste my twitter page or at and foster 1916 or if you want to follow hashtag Superman in life, that's really the hashtag I own because no one else uses it. I created it. <laughs> uh, I am on Instagram and I will provide you a good morning, some great food, some wrestling moments, and a simple moment once in a while as part of my Instagram stories now that I'm doing. On Instagram, at infoster1916. Or if you haven't already, please follow my simple YouTube channel here at youtube.com forward slash user forward slash no foster 210. You'll find all sorts of wrestling content here, reviews, recaps, takes, summaries, discussions, and more in nice, neat, organized players for you. Of course, at the heart of it is this series, Has the Truth Life Matters, and it will continue into the next decade as long as Cruiserweight Wrestling exists then, now, and forever. 205 Live and beyond. If you haven't figured it out by now, also, by the fact of my Twitter uh, URL, support NoDQ. The reason I'm in YouTube, forever and dead to the NoDQ family. Thank you, Aaron Riff, and everybody I've come to know from it. NoDQ Galaxy team and beyond. Go buy a shirt. Go buy a tapestry. Buy some merchandise. Just support my friends or me. Do it. Just have fun with it. NoDQ.com forward slash merch takes you to the store. Follow NoDQ on our social media platforms. Your opinions matter. There's a comment section on everything. Polls, comms, memes, gifts, reviews, recaps, polls, votes. Sexy female picks. Your name is there, primarily WWE with a little bit of AEW and independent wrestling. And also, as he alluded to, please support my friends. There's support his channel. Support Aftermatch Wrestling. I will be back with the NX team for NX Team League 2, where I am the inaugural champ, and I can't wait to mm -hmm. kick it off with NXT UK TakeOver Blackpool 2. I also will be back with Team No DQ to keep score of the entire 18-some people in that team, as well as kickstart in whole, the NoDQ Galaxy Predictions League, currently won in pilot by Colin Andrew, go follow the clear Colin Andrew. And that will kick off come Royal Rumble weekend. And also, if you haven't figured it out what I've been talking about, as we head into the next decade, we already got our first start coming this week. My friend and I here, we are part of a very special team that is also at the heart of our wrestling fandom. Team Indie DQ, we're all things wrestling match to us, big, small, you name it, and we each have the heart of our own promotions. And at my heart is, of course, New Japan Pro Wrestling. So please come back to this channel on Friday and stay tuned where me and the entirety I'm going to try Team Indie DQ, the Holiday Chris Mace, Mark the Griff Reviews, the lovely Cindy G, good brother Christopher Woods, our partner and Pokemon fan, Chris Cass, and of course, <clears throat> the Archangel James Hubert, as we come together to predict in its entirety, Wrestle Kingdom 14. And also, I will be doing a simple take forward slash review after night one, and also getting a simple extra as we predict the remaining matches that come to fruition, and I got special circumstances set up for those, for night two, and I will come back for a review after night two, and I will also bring you a simple extra based on what I learned at bell time for New Year's Dash, because that is when New Year's Dash will be known. There is a ton of wrestling content coming and a loaded week, and I can't wait to kick it off. Also, stay tuned tomorrow. I will be doing a Simple Man's Random Wrestling special where I discuss my thoughts on 2019's year in New Japan Pro Wrestling. The matches, the rivalries, oh. the takeaways, and also what I hope to see in 2020 and what could happen as soon as Wrestle Kingdom has passed, especially with some teasers we've already gotten. And as always, as I like to close, and of course, support my friends and hashtag two of them as Facebook group. Support your wrestling outlets, both big and small, and let's keep growing this incredible, diverse, unique, elite wrestling community together. Simple as that. With that being said, thank you so much for tuning in to the last two of five matters of this decade in 2019. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, please like, share, subscribe, comment, tell a friend. Hit that subscribe button to know when the next video goes live here and support me. Hit the bell to know when the next video is actually going to go live. I got that backwards, but hey, I'm human. Botch! 
And again, until uh, my New Japan Pro Wrestling uh, special, and of course, me and Timmy Q come together this Friday for predictions on Wrestle Kingdom, I cannot freaking wait. Take care. Have a wonderful night. Tomorrow's never guaranteed. Treasure your family. Enjoy life. Enjoy wrestling. Find some last-minute wrestling to enjoy as we wrap up 2019. Find something to excite you and follow. There's so much now to head into the next decade in 2020. And until the next video, when I buy myself with Timmy DQ in YouTube or somewhere else beyond my channel, for myself, the Simple Man, and my, one of my best friends here, and my 205 Live co-host, Christopher Mace, we hope that you all, if we don't see you till next time, Happy New Year and have a good night. Happy New Year's all. Have a good night. Never bet and against you. And remember, and you know I was going to say this because he's my Funaki. 205 Live, whether you believe in me or not, I will always believe in it. 205 Live, then, now, and forever, as we go into the next decade, will always matter indeed and for not who always be smat downs number one <laughs> good night everybody bye bye good night